Hello everyone and welcome to my final presentation for the Certificate in Player Care. My name is Michael DeVille and I'm going to focus on the case of Vincent Perigard to highlight issues and best practice regarding welfare in football. So here I've started by illustrating Vincent's career. Throughout this presentation we will explore how he went from the man dubbed to be worth billions to then retiring at the tender age of 28. To help highlight a number of welfare issues, we will draw upon parts of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, look at internal and external contributors, as well as unique risk factors and adverse childhood experiences that may have exacerbated the mental health issues that he was eventually diagnosed with in 2008. For each issue, we will then look at how they can be mitigated through good practice. OK, so the first issue that I identified was the violation of Vincent's physiological needs, especially regarding food. As an overseas player, he made it very clear that he did not enjoy eating the same food every day, as this was probably different to his preferred meals, being Cameroonian born, and what he was used to when playing in France and Italy. Also, arriving as just a 19 year old, his culinary skills may have been lacking. So, to have met this basic physiological need, the club could have held, held themed dinner evenings and educated the chefs to include a diverse selection of food. And in doing so, the club would have also facilitated cultural integration, simulated a sort of cultural homecoming for the players, and even contributed to the personal development by educating them on their different international cuisines. And secondly, when Van Son arrived in Portsmouth, he was put up in temporary accommodation for four months. Although he was provided with shelter here, there was a lack of stability and this drained him over time. Instead, the club could have improved their onboarding and accommodation protocol by utilising a host family, preferably French speakers. This would have helped him settle, help mitigate any language barriers, and he was all, would have also been able to pick up little bits of English along the way. And staying with accommodation, but this time with a focus on safety needs, there were question marks around Vincent's security. The questions provided in the first orange box on the screen are just a few examples. So to in order to ensure best practice, the club should have provided secure accommodation within walking distance from the training ground. They should have ensured transportation to and from training and after matches but also should ensure a relationship with security personnel at the hotel where the players are housed, all to help Vanson and others in his situation meet their safety needs and move closer up the hierarchy. Safety needs are also defined by feelings of control and predictability, something that was heavily neglected in Vanson's forced and involuntary move from Juventus to Portsmouth. Due to the fast nature of the transfer, the pre-signing period may have been very small for the signing club. Therefore, to evidence best practice, they should have really maximised the signing on period, or the first 24 hours. Specifically, they could have assigned Vincent a buddy or a French speaking teammate to help ease any worries, provided a mobile phone or some means of communication, and got the ball rolling with language lessons, transport, and any other support Vanson may have had at Juventus. The final need that I'm going to highlight is that of belongingness. Due to the mental health issues that began as a result of his transfer, Vanson sought acceptance in a debilitative way through faking and skilled manipulation. Unfortunately, Vanson got caught in a vicious cycle where his conformity to normative values within the group led to an incongruence between his actual self and his ideal self which fueled exhaustion and isolation and created further mental health issues. Fleischer in 2007 found that Cameroonians value extended family systems as they provide belonging, solidarity and protection. And therefore good practice in this scenario would be, be to maintain these important social networks. Vanson should have been able to communicate within a circle and the club may even provide family accommodation in the future. Finally, regular team building activities would allow players to build rapport away from football and feel connected by showing their true self. And finally, another welfare issue I've highlighted is the lack of mental health transparency that was caused by a number of unique risk factors within football. Richard Elliott's research paper on Vanson's career showed three particular beliefs that contributed to his downturn in mental health. 
and these three can be seen on the screen in the orange box. Vanson reported not wanting to show weakness to protect his place in the team, and that he was often told to just get on with it. Instead, if clubs want to show best practice, they should promote the safe disclosure of emotional needs without an impact on team selection. They should also provide a number of emotional outlets, such as a sports psychologist or even an external counsellor. To mitigate the occurrence of destructive behaviours such as alcoholism, or in Vanson's case in 2007, actually being arrested. Upon arrival to the club, players should be introduced to the team or external psychologist, and instead of being forced to meet, they can be simply made aware that they are there if needed. To finish, it seems appropriate to mention adverse childhood experiences or lived experiences that resulted in PTSD given that Vanson was only 19 years old when he moved to an unknown team in a very quick transfer, and given that the transfer resulted in a number of challenges that served as early triggers in the onset of his mental illness. These challenges affected his perception both of himself and the perception of others towards him, his environment drastically changed, and his physical care took a turn for the worst. Here, instead of trying to fix the problem, best practice may involve finding a workable way around the issues to reduce the effect in the future. So, for example, had Portsmouth noticed, noticed Vanson's issues when at the club, they could have supported his health and his personal and professional development. They could have explored a broader identity away from football to help him disassociate and reduce the chances of burnout, but also had close liaison with the inner circle and really build on his feelings of belongingness. And now I'll just leave you with a summary of the five welfare issues that I identified and how they may have been prioritised at the time to improve Vanson's experience. Thank you very much for listening.